First, the rugby fraternity reeled in shock at the recent announcement that Springbok Pat Lambie was retiring. At the peak of his career, the 28-year-old had taken one too many knocks to the head on the field and it was retire or risk permanent brain damage from the effects of concussion. Derek Watts spoke to the rugby superstar via Skype. Another strong take from Etzebeth with uh, Tona getting up. This was the beginning of the end of Pat Lambie's rugby career. Newlands 2016, CJ Stunder attempted to charge down a clearance kick by Lambie, striking him square in the face and knocking him out stone cold for 20 minutes. Yeah, unfortunately that was the, the start of the rot, as they say. Since 2016, I've had four concussions and with all of them, I have suffered from these post-concussion symptoms. And now it seems as though every time I do have a big trauma to my head, it takes me longer and longer to, to shake off these symptoms. It must have been one of the toughest decisions for a professional rugby player to make at the peak of his career. Retire or risk permanent brain damage. Pat suffered a knee injury in April last year while playing in France for Racing 92. Everyone was anticipating seeing him back in play early this year. But then came his shocking announcement that he was retiring from rugby. The last few months has been a, a long journey, a, a big process that has had to unfold and obviously gutted and hugely disappointed to have to step away from a game that I love so much. But in the same breath, I'm feeling quite relieved that I know my health is not at risk any further and there's no chance of receiving any more serious head injuries. Pat Lambie's retirement at the age of 28, at the peak of his career, has once again brought into sharp focus the dangers of concussion in a contact sport. We're at nine months now since my last head knock and I've still got these symptoms. Yeah, so I wake up in the morning um, feeling quite groggy with a thick head, a bit of a headache, and my eyes are extremely sensitive to light screens. If I do a heavy weight session, my eyes start stinging. The specialists are all saying that we don't know what will happen if I get another head impact and how long these symptoms will last for after that one. So it's best that I, I stop playing. Pat Lambie burst onto the first class rugby scene at the tender age of 19 here in Durban stealing the hearts of fans. It wasn't long before commentators realized his amazing talent and dubbed him the baby-faced assassin. He was the youngest member of the Springboks Rugby World Cup squad in 2011 and went on to play 58 matches for the national team. He left the Sharks and Springboks in 2017 to join the French club Racing 92. Stephen de Blanche captained the Sharks in 2010 in the Curry Cup final when Lambie played the game that kick-started his career. I sent him a message early in the morning and in the most diplomatic Pat Lambie way, he basically sent one back, don't worry about me old man, I'll, I'll make sure I arrive at the old game. Old man. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. And two tries, 25 points later, you know, he was man of the match and also got selected for the Springbok team that evening. Yeah, that was one of the best days of my life, I think. Uh, to be involved in the Sharks team that won the Curry Cup final and then to come off the field and see that I was included in the end of year Springbok touring squad was just almost too much to take in. His teammate Tendai the Beast and Tawarera was gutted by Lambie's retirement. Pat epitomized what it you know, means to be a professional sportsman. You know, he really handled himself really well and always trained very hard and treated everybody around him with respect. You know, I drew a lot of inspiration from him. To take the lead for South Africa. Another standout moment was his game-deciding penalty kick against the All Blacks at Ellis Park in 2014. Up until then, the All Blacks were unbeaten in 22 games and Lambie's kick earned the box the famous 27-25 victory. The atmosphere at Ellis Park that day was something that I will never ever forget. It was an amazing experience to be a part of that win and to have had a little say in it as well at the end there. But his career began to be plagued by concussion. After the first one in 2016, there were three more. But his decision to play on after the last concussion seems to have done the damage. 
I didn't want to go off the field, obviously, because it was the semi-final. It was a big occasion. It wasn't a very wise decision for me to have continued playing at that point. Luckily enough for me, it was in the next game, only three minutes in, that I hurt my knee. So I haven't played any rugby since. One of the reasons rugby is so exciting to watch is it's an extremely physical sport. But in the last year alone, six players have died globally. And concussion is the most common injury suffered by rugby players. Stats have risen every year for the last seven, and some say it's as bad as boxing. Professor John Patricius, founder and director of Sports Concussion South Africa, is a consultant to world rugby. The exposure of our players is much more than it was even 10 or 15 years ago. Players are bigger, they're faster, the contacts are greater and more frequent. The ball is in play more often and they're playing more frequently. There's no such thing as a rugby season anymore. It's a 12 month of the year process. A recent report shows that the international rules regarding contact to the head have had little or no effect when it comes to the frequency of concussion. Pat Lambie is the latest international rugby player forced to retire because of concussion. Along with Mike Blair Scotland, Jonathan Thomas Wales, Andy Hazel England, Ben Afiki New Zealand and Elton Flatley Australia. World Rugby has made huge strides to improve the safety of the game since Stefan Tablanche's day. He played professionally between 1994 and 2012. A lot of guys got concussed, there were no head injury assessments and really didn't take the necessary precaution and played the next weekend. So yes, we walked it off and carried on. So you might get hit from the back or fall with your head on the back, but this part of the brain hits the skull and gets injured, you see? Push, push, push. If you think back 15, 20 years ago, we were missing a lot of concussions. Yeah, yeah. Now we realize a whole ambit of at least 20 symptoms and signs that we look out for that might indicate a potential concussion. Now the beast isn't scared of uh, robust play. Do you ever think about head injuries? I do, but I guess uh, you know all the training that we do and the conditioning uh, kind of prepares us, you know, for the you know for those hard collisions we take on the field. But uh, you know, there's a way. You know, rugby uh, is protected. You know, so you can't really tackle a guy, you know, upstairs or above the neck. So you always know that the law kind of protects you. These days, the rules have changed. No contact from the shoulders up. You know, when players do make contact with the head of an opposing player, the sanctions are quite severe. From anything from four to six to eight to 12 weeks that you're not allowed to play. Try again at the same time. Most people recover fully from concussion with rest and physiotherapy. So this would be your home exercise that you do at home. Megan Robertson has helped Pat enormously. We managed to alleviate some of his difficulty tracking the ball, his balance improved so he can sidestep more quickly and feel more confident going into a tackle, and just basically relieve some of his neck pain symptoms because he often had a really tight neck. The difficulty with Pat is that he had an underlying migraine history, and that keeps tripping up the concussion symptoms. It's really, really nice that there are things that can be done to get on top of these symptoms, and it's not just a waiting game. The pressure to win and stay in the game is enormous. Players feel they have to man up and play through the pain. Head injuries are difficult to see and in many ways harder to admit to. There's this mentality that you should man up and, and play on and that a concussion or a head injury is not such a big deal. You know, people forgive you for coming off if you've broken your ankle or you know, popped your AC joint in your shoulder and you can be seen to be walking around for the next few weeks with crutches. The scans and results can all be clear that actually there are consequences inside your head and you don't feel right as a player. And you know, everyone will look at you and think, um, you're absolutely fine, but you're not feeling yourself. And you know, eventually people can start asking questions. There's the expectations of the supporters, of the crowd and of yourself to win the game. So more often than not, you go onto the field with a slight needle, you know, take a painkiller, get injection, numb the pain, and you play through it. A head injury doesn't quite work like that. Yes, you might run off the headache, but the long-term ramifications could be brutal. Pat Lambie blazed a trail through rugby history with his legendary kicks and extraordinary tries. Everyone is sad to see this shining star burn out so soon. I'm not exactly sure what the future holds at the moment. We are obviously expecting a little baby in June, so that's something really exciting to look forward to. 
it's been an incredible almost 10 year journey and one that I'll look back on for the rest of my life with really, really fond memories. So thank you to everyone that's, that's been involved. From all of us, I think certainly from the Sharks family, thank you so much for everything that you've given the game. Still got a lot more to offer and it was an absolute privilege playing with you in the same jersey. You're definitely one of the best who have ever played the game. To the youngsters out there that you know dream of playing professional rugby, you're a great role model, buddy. Cheers. <laughs>